This project was inspired by the recent string of created lab videos posted about how you can improve performance on the new M1 MacBook Airs. So I decided to test it out on the 2020 Intel MacBook Pro to see if the improvements would justify the mod. So we've got the, the MacBook Pro. The certain variables that I have in place are that there is like a cutting mat and it's pretty thick. I'd say it's like a couple millimeters and this MacBook is in a case, is like in a silicone plastic case, and it's lifted off. So I want the case to be doing all the thermal work. And I've been leaving the Mac idling for a few minutes so we can get a base temperature. Right now it's sitting at like 34 degrees. It, the wattage is 2.3, frequency is 2.1, and we are going to be running Cinebench. Right now, I am going to start logging on Intel Power Gadget. We're gonna log to file, so it's starting to log. See, there's a small spike, nothing too much being added on. And we are going to start single core test first. Score was 1050. Upon doing the single core test for pre and post thermal pad, the difference was so marginal that I will not be adding any graphs, um, but I will show you the bare results. Um, I believe that's due to the fact, obviously, that the single core tests do not produce enough heat Thus, the thermal pad doesn't become that big of a factor. All right, so now things are gonna get a little more exciting. Uh, we're gonna be doing the multi-core test pre and post thermal pad. If you hear the fan, right now it's at max fan speed at 6,300 RPM, 6,800 RPM for fan number one and two. There we go, 4,700 and 47, 4747 points. Okay, so now we're gonna get into how I applied the thermal pad. Honestly, the most difficult part about this whole process was taking out the back cover of the MacBook Pro. You just have to remember the fact that the cover does not come off like that. It first comes off with clip. First, you are going to want to shut down your Mac. You to turn it over. Take off any cover you've got. The screwdriving kit and take out these pentalo screws. I've already taken them out. And this is where the this is where it gets a little tricky. You need a pry tool, suction cup, lift it up. And as you see, when you lift it up, you will see there is an opening there. Just put this in the opening. There you go, you hear those clips coming off. And you do the same thing around the side. Don't dig in too deep because you'll you'll tear something. So just go in like two to three millimeters just to pry it open. There we go. You heard that. Okay, holding it like this, pushing this way and pulling outward. Be careful of your fingers. Don't scrape them through here. Ugh. Okay, so there we've got the back. Got some thermal pads. This is, I believe, 1.5. So we're gonna cut it. Let's just look at how big it should be. Okay, right there. This is some thermal pad that I got off of AliExpress. So let's put this on. Like this. There we go. So we got most of the heat pipe and definitely the CPU that's underneath this. We're going to lift this film. There we go, perfect. So as you can see, there's, there's like clips here, clips there, that fit into these teeth. So we're gonna do that carefully. So you need to start off like, like this. Make sure the clips are in first, like that. About that side it down, push it down, and push in, then just clip the rest. So here and here. Great. And okay, let's try the let's try the next test. Okay, here we go. We're at the end of the multi-core test. This is with a thermal pad and it's closing off at around 95. And the score is, wow, okay, 48, 60. There has been an increase, 113 points. So I think that's a success. Okay, so now the results are in. As you can see here, 
Green is post thermal pad and blue is pre thermal pad. The graph you're seeing in front of you is actually the thermal performance of uh, during this whole test. And as you can see, it's there's not much of a difference. It's actually pretty similar throughout the whole test. One thing to note, you'll see these three dips within all the graphs. This is not an indication of thermal throttling. These are actually points in the 10 minute long Cinebench multi-core test where it has to restart the test because it's already done a one pass through. And this is where things get really interesting. If we head over to the graph with CPU utilization, we can see there is a 12% increase after applying the thermal pad. This means the thermal pad was able to give the laptop more room to actually utilize more of the processing power. Speaking of processing power, we can see here that the general area of the green line is indeed well above the blue. This resulted in two to three more watts available to the laptop after the thermal, thermal application. And finally, we can see in the graph showing CPU frequency that after applying the thermal pad, the general area of the green line is hovering nearly 100 megahertz higher than before applying the thermal pad. After the modification, I did run another multi-core test with the cover off, and I was a little bit surprised with how hot the back was actually getting. If you are the type of person that likes to put your laptop on your lap, you might be in for a rude surprise when your thighs and maybe your nether regions feel a little toasty. However, if you are okay with sacrificing comfort for more performance, then this modification would be of interest to you. So I did this for fun. I had a cooling mat and then you can hear it right now. It was blowing air onto the cover of the case and I got 5,074 on the multi-core test. That's already a 211 point difference between the post thermal pad result and a 327 point difference between the thermal pad result. Just for fun, I quickly put together the cooling mat results in a graph comparing all three of the other results. Please note that the gray line is the application of the thermal pad in tandem with using the cooling mat. Immediately, we evidently see that having cold air blowing on the laptop bottom cover helps the CPU heat sink stay relatively cooler than normal. Thus, the CPU package was able to stay at a lower temperature. Interestingly, the laptop was able to draw more power, clocking at higher wattages being pulled from the socket. And finally, we can see the clear difference the cooling mat made when we compare CPU frequencies, where the cooling mat allowed the laptop to reach 120 megahertz higher than normal. So this channel will be covering DIYs and tech reviews. If you like what you saw today, it'll mean a lot to me if you leave a comment and hit that like and subscribe button. And let me know in the comments if you tried this mod and you liked what you were getting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.